Wednesday, October the 2nd, 2024. We know what's on the action and on the slate today. That's right, just MLB playoffs, but that does not mean that we're still not gonna make bets. Three winners that are on the way for you guys. This is the free three. Let's get into it. What's up guys, it's your boy Noble Living back with another DYF Bets video. I wanna bring out my favorite picks and plays of the day as we just try to get to the bag together and make some money. Yesterday was not the day that we wanted. It was not the start to October that we needed. And you know what, it, 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 it hurts a little bit because I felt like we had some pretty good reads but overall one and three on the day yesterday we cashed on the tigers first five money line i told you guys that if you didn't watch the video early if you're not smashed that subscribe button hitting that bell then you're gonna miss that winner and it cashed in pretty early for us shout out to the tigers for getting it done I actually think they might win the World Series, or at least get there. But hey, we'll come back to that a little bit later. All right. And then our three losses on the day, the Fisicalia points. I hate to see that. I should have just taken the links on the spread because they won their game outright. We took them in the money line parlay with the Orioles, and they ended up losing one to nothing. So that was a tough loss. The Orioles better figure it out because the Royals are a team that, I mean, you, you can only lose one more game at this point, right? So that's really tough to see. And then we also lost on the Mets and Brewers nerfy. We cashed in our first two nerfies of the day. I gave you the cheapest nerfy on the board, and then guess what happens? It lost. So one and three on the day yesterday. Not the start that we wanted to the month of October, but it is okay we've got a long month ahead of us so if you haven't been subscribed to the channel make sure you guys are doing that because i'm also going to have a new type of video that's going to come out for you guys we're going to do the free three like we've been doing it but what i'm also going to do is a little challenge with you guys so i'm starting off with a thousand dollars inside of my bankroll a thousand dollars i'm going to take a screenshot of it right here so you guys can see it and what we're going to do is i'm going to give you guys plays every day whether it's in the discord group it's either going to be on the free three or it's going to be on my twitter page but it's probably going to be on all three platforms i'm going to give out every single play that i'm taking and i'm also going to show you guys the strategy that i utilize to grow my bankroll but also to take profit along the way there is no real specific goal that I have right now. If you've been following me for a minute, you know, a year or two ago, I did like a 1K to 10K in 10 days. Like there's different things that I do like that to have fun with this stuff. But for me, what I wanna do is start with a fresh month, October, see what we can do with this $1,000, see how disciplined we can be, and let's see how long it can take us to grow this thing, and let's see how far it can take us. So if you wanna join up, be a part of the journey of that new video that's gonna be dropping here on the channel, come back tomorrow because we're gonna to start today first a thousand dollars is today so make sure you guys tap in and some of these picks that i'm giving out today on the free three i'm going to be taking them just alongside you guys so this way you guys understand hey i'm not just out here just giving out plays like the rest of these handicappers online i'm really putting money behind the things that i'm doing all right let's dive into these winners for today on the mlb playoffs game two in the wild card for my first best bet of the day, let's go to our Nerfy of the day. And we're going to go to the Nerfy between the Braves and the Padres. This was actually the only game yesterday that I did not take the Nerfy in. And rightfully so. I mean, we saw Fernando Tatis crank one out of the building in the first inning there. But today, I like the pitching matchup that we're getting between these two teams. We've got Max Fried on the mound for the Braves. We've got Joe Musgrove going for the Padres. Two pitchers with postseason experience who've been in this position before. Unlike Smith Sawyer last night for the Braves, this is expensive. I'm not going to lie to you. I normally don't give out minus 150 odd plays here on the channel, but I really do like it. I do think that this game goes under in general. Both of these guys have been nerfy soldiers this year. Max Freed on the year, 23 and 6 to the nerfy. Meanwhile, Joe Musgrove, 14 and 5 to the nerfy, but he hit his last 11 in a row. So he started off a little bit slow, but he started to pick it up in the back half of the season especially as he was overcoming those injuries earlier on the year. Both of these pitchers have been in really good form of late. 3.88 ERA for Joe Musgrove. And you can literally look at his last three starts in a row, two earned runs or less given up. And he faced the Dodgers in that period as well. And he hit the nerfies in all those games. Meanwhile, Max Free has a 3.25 ERA. On his last nerfie against the Royals, his nerfie before that against the Marlins. And we've seen him be solid as well. Three earned runs or less 
less, giving up in three straight starts. That's the type of momentum that I want building into this postseason. Both of these teams are a little bit stronger on the offensive side when it comes to scoring runs in the first inning. About a 71% Nerfy success rate. If you guys know me, I'm normally typically trying to look for that 75% or higher, but 71% is still solid. Yes, I know that it is expensive, but it is postseason baseball. You're going to pay for the juice on these innings, but you know what? Look at the game that happened yesterday in the Royals and Orioles. That was a one nothing final score. You could literally walk that thing down every single inning and you would have made money. Same thing with the Tigers game. They didn't score runs until the third inning and the ninth inning. So a lot of these games have been going under. So for me, I do like the nerfy here. If you don't want to take the nerfy, just take the first five under. Take the overall under if you just want to give you guys yourself a little bit of a cushion of innings. But for me, I like to sweat the six out. It's quick, easy money. Let's go with it today. Nerfy between the Braves and the Padres as our first pick of the day. For our second best bet of the day, we're going to go with a side here. And we're going to go to the Mets and Brewers matchup like we did yesterday. But instead of taking the Nerfy here, we're going to just isolate this to the Mets. And I'm going to take them on the first five money line. We're getting really good odd value here at minus 105 odds. Now, if you look at the numbers for the Brewers, okay? They have not won a postseason game in their last five games. Dating back to 2022, they have not won a postseason game. 2022, 2023, and then this year, 2024, they have not been able to get it done. They were swept last year in the wild card series, and here we are. We have a position for them to get swept again. I don't know if they're going to win this game. I do lean them winning the full game because I don't know if they're going to lose another one at home. I mean, right? The odds just have to turn back in their favor at some point, but it's really hard for me to back them here, especially in the first five because Sean Manaya is on the mound for the Mets, and he's been stellar this year. 12 and 6 on the year, the 3.47 ERA to go with 184 strikeouts. But if you look at his numbers, in his last start against the Brewers, he went three and two thirds innings, seven hits, six runs, given up to go with one home run. That right there was an outlier. And that's why we're getting value on this pick because people are looking at how Manaya performed against the Brewers in his last start to end the regular season. And they're like, okay, if they got to him then, there's no reason why they shouldn't get to him again today. And then we saw them score some runs off of Severino yesterday. So those bats should be able to score some runs off of him today. Not opposed to that. I think that they can score some runs. But when you look at it, Frankie Montas, who's on the mound for the for the Brewers, has been a guy who's not been in the best of form, in all honesty. 4.84 ERA to go with a 7-11 and record, 148 strikeouts. This is a guy that you have to really look at his full body of work to understand, like, hold on, he hasn't really been as good as the numbers may say he is. Yeah, in his last start against the Mets, he did face Manaya, and he went four innings, only two earned runs given up to go with one home run. So he did pick up the win against Manaya, but because we have that rematch, I I'm leaning towards Manaya here, but look at some of his other starts. And his start before that against the Diamondbacks, two and two-thirds innings, seven runs given up, three home runs. His start before that against the Phillies, five and two-thirds innings, six hits, three earned runs given up, and another two home runs. He's somebody who struggles with control. If you look at his numbers, in his last seven starts, he's given up at least two walks or more in each of those starts. That is not going to get it done against a Mets lineup that is red hot. I know they're a little bit tired right now. I know they've been playing a lot of baseball because they had that doubleheader a few days ago just to get into this position. But we saw yesterday what happens when you have that game underneath your belt, when you come into this game motivated. And truthfully, they have the MVP right now in the National League, in my opinion, Francisco Lindor. He's been absolutely amazing for this lineup. And overall, the pieces that the Mets have from not just Alonzo and Lindor, to some of the role players, the way that they have been stepping up. We saw Iglesias get an RBI yesterday. We saw Marte get an RBI yesterday. Martinez with two RBIs. Winker with two. Vientos with two. So if they were able to score eight runs, and we didn't even mention Lindor's name. We didn't even mention Alonzo's name. We didn't even mention Nimmo's name. These are the catalysts of this team, and that gives me the confidence to say, you know what? I like them in this spot today. As long as they can keep the fielding 
pretty good because they've been having a few errors here and there. They can keep the ball inside of the ballpark. I like the Mets here. I like them in the first five. I'm isolating this to Sean Manaya. I believe that he's the much better of the two pitchers here. I'm not willing to trust Frankie Montas in this situation. Frankie Montas is a guy who only has three postseason starts. And he has a 9.45 ERA in those three starts. I'm not willing to back him here. I'm not willing to back the Brew Crew. This is a team that always seems to fall apart come postseason time. Give me the Mets first five money line as our second best bet of the day. For our third and final pick of the day, because I really like the Mets today, because I really like Sean Maniah, I'm going to take him. And I'm going to take his pitching out over 15 and a half plus 110 odds. So we're getting really good value on this. And I understand that in the postseason, starting pitchers typically get a shorter lease, right? You have less games to play with. You got to win for the game in front of you. You have to kind of manage things that and how they're looking. But you know what? If arms are going to get fatigued, this is the time to try it out because it's win or go home. But this is a Mets lineup and a manager who's willing to start his pitchers and let them go longer if they're in a rhythm. We saw that yesterday with Severino. He gave up four runs and he still went six innings and he still went over this number as well. Keep in mind, the Mets have not had a day off since the 27th of September. And that was really because of the rain out in those games against Atlanta. That's why they had to play the doubleheader a few days ago on the day off the rest break in order to get into the postseason. So they literally pitched that doubleheader in both of those games. And keep in mind, the first game of that doubleheader, the final score of that game was eight to seven. So they had to utilize several pitchers in that game. In total, they actually used four pitchers in the relief in that game. And then yes, in the second half of the doubleheader, and yesterday they only used two ballpen arms, but this is a ballpen that has to think about, you know, the next series. They have to think about, hey, who've had a lot of pitches and had not had a lot of days of rest. But Sean Manaya, I mentioned that he got banged up against his Brewers team, only three and a two thirds innings in his last start. But if you look at his other numbers, he literally had three, six, eight straight starts with a quality start. So that means six innings or more. He's done that in eight straight starts. Granted, besides that last start, and even if you take out the other bad start that he had on August the 10th against the Mariners, then you can add two more quality starts on that. So 10 of the last 12 starts, he's literally gone six and two thirds innings. So almost seven innings, which is close to about 18, 19, 20 pitching outs. So for me, 15 and a half, we're just asking for him to get into the sixth inning here and get one out. That's not asking for too much. And this ballpen is the weakness of this Mets line. Lineup. They know that. So as a result, I think the manager understands, like, let's keep the starters in as long as possible. If we can bring in one middle reliever, one setup man, and then bring in Diaz to close out the game, that will be perfect. But I, because I lean the Mets on the first five money line as well, I believe that they're going to give the run so support to Manaya. That's going to allow him to back it up and be able to go deep in this game. Give me Sean Manaya over 15 and a half pitching outs. And another thing that I also liked as well, that gives me a little bit more confidence to take him in this situation as well, the the Brewers are bottom 10 in the major leagues in strikeouts per game and also pitches per at bat. So they don't take a whole lot of pitches. They strike out pretty often, which is also something that can help Manaya keep that pitch count low as long as his control is there because he is somebody who can struggle with the walks. As long as the control is there, as long as he can keep the pitch count low, there's no reason why he should not get into the sixth inning here. Give me this as our third and final pick of the day. Well, that's it for me today, my friends. Three best bets, three winners that I'm giving you guys on this Wednesday card. Give me the Nerfy in the Braves and Padres game as we're going to back Max Fried and Joe Musgrove there. Give me the Mets on the first five on the money line. I'm going to continue to ride with their red hot bats here. And then Sean Manaya, over 15 and a half pitching outs. I'm expecting a bounce pack performance against the Brew Crew that he just faced and that he should be able to give us a better start here in this matchup. For more picks and plays that I'm dropping throughout the day, yes, we have early baseball. If you want those picks, click the link in the description, join the free Discord group, and we're starting our $1,000 challenge today. So make sure you guys are tapped into the videos on the channel so this way you guys can see how we're going to continue to grow the bankroll. All right, my friends? Let's get to that cheddar, and I'll see you on tomorrow's video. Later, gang.